This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. And you keep asking God what you need to do like you're going to do it based on your performance and make something happen without him. And you would think once you go do it, at least you'll come back and say, Lord, that didn't work. And then what we do, we come back, and I don't understand. I did this, I did that, I did that. I understand. Get your doing out of the way and get your believing in what he's already done and walk around and rest in peace. Text to give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. the Old Testament, the way to God was through the blood of animals. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Well, let me show it to you. Uh, it, well, it was through the blood of animals, but the blood of animals could never take away sins. Hebrews chapter 10 and 4. I just want you to see it real quick. The way to God under the Old Testament was through the blood of animals. That was the only way they could, could, could get to God, was through the blood of animals. But the blood of animals could never take away sin. It could never do it. You go every year, and you would still have to go year after year after year. The priest could never sit down. He stood up all the time because he knew this was going to be happening over and over and over again. Verse 4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Can't do it. Under the Old Testament, to live that way, your sins can't be dealt with except to cover them up for a year. And think about going in, taking your sacrifice, taking it to the priest, and then as soon as you walk out, you and your wife get into it on the way home. And you got to carry that with you for the whole year until you can come back and get it taken care of. So now you got sin consciousness the whole year. And then Leviticus 5 says, and you're going to be responsible for your sin, and you might, you might get in trouble and something's something going to happen to you for sin you don't even know you did. Wow. All right, now watch this. So... Uh, the way to God under the Old Testament, now this is going to be heavy, the way to God under the Old Testament was fear. Listen to me carefully. It was fear. Deuteronomy 6, 13. Somebody says, what are you talking about? I, I never heard that before because in most churches they mix the old with the new and they kind of put things in that they want to, but the way to God was fear. It was total fear. Yeah. Watch this. Deuteronomy 6, 13, uh, he said, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, serve him, and shall swear by his name. Now, I'm used to reading fear under the New Testament where it talks about reverence and respect. And so I had to rightly divide and say, Now, hold on a minute now. Where are we? We are dealing with the law. And when you deal with the law, and you understand the consequences for breaking the law, people walked in fear of the curse, that they would be stoned, that they would be killed, and a lot of people died because they were walking in the fear of the punishment that comes from breaking the law. That kind of fear brings what? Bondage. That kind of fear brings bondage. So, uh, after Jesus came and shed his blood, a new and a living way to God was introduced. Let's talk a little bit about that. 
Look at Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16. 4, 4, they came with fear, afraid that I didn't keep the law or I can't keep the law, and there is a consequence. If you keep his commandments, you'll be blessed. If you don't keep his commandments, you will be cursed. And then if you read 15, 16, 17, the end of Deuteronomy 28, it tells all the disease that come upon you. Listen, in those days, if I lived under the law and the consequences for not keeping the law would be, would be most of the time death. Those people died. When you read the curse, it wasn't, oh, the curse. No, they died as a result of that. And, and a certain part of the curse said they're going to keep doing this until you die. One guy picked up sticks on the Sabbath and was stoned to death. Children rebelled against you. You don't send them to the psychiatric institute. You stone them and kill them because rebellion was dealt with. And when there was rebellion in the tribe, God would call for everybody in the tribe to die, women, men, children, ox, animals, everybody had to die to wipe out rebellion. Because why? Nobody could get born again. So you either allow the demonic culture to continue to grow or you had to do something to cut it off or curb it until Jesus could come. Yes, <sighs> yeah. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come how? Boldly. There it is. See, that, there's that boldness again. I guarantee you that new and li living way is boldness, liberty. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Notice the new and living way. We come with liberty to the throne of grace, not fear. We're coming with boldness, not fear, that we may obtain, notice, notice what we get, mercy, and we'll find grace to help in a time of need. We're not getting judgment and punishment. We're getting mercy and grace. The new and living way, mercy and grace. The Old Testament way, punishment, condemnation, and judgment. There are people who still want to live there. All right, watch carefully now. God wants us to approach him with boldness and not fear. So in the New Testament, we don't fear God, we love God. In the New Testament, we don't fear God, we love God. Now, here's what I want to show you. Romans 8, 15, let's look at it in the King James and in the, in the New Living Translation. Bondage is the function of fear, ladies and gentlemen. The fear that comes from observing and living by the law. All right, now look what he says. I'm going to read it in two translations. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage is a result of fear. Wherever you find somebody operating in fear, bondage comes as a result of fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You have not received the spirit of bondage again. Notice what he says, again to fear. Look what he's, he's saying, I have set my blood, I have set you free. In this New Testament, we are not going back to fear and bondage. We're not doing that again. Whew, that's over. I said that's over. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters of God, and look what you have the boldness and the liberty to do. Cry, Abba, Father. That's your daddy now. This is a whole different relationship between a servant and a master. This is now your daddy, which brings with it in this relationship the liberty to do certain things because that's your daddy. I look at this in uh, the New Living, the, 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 the NLT, the New and Living Way. We got to know the New and Living Way. We can't be church people in church under the New Testament, got born again from the New Testament, but still living the old way. That's crazy. And, and, and no preacher will preach it until he understands that there is a contrast between the old and the new. You don't mix them. You can't to take new wine and put it in old wine skins or it'll burst and you won't get the benefit of either one, the wine or the bottle. That's good. That's good. What's the scripture? Revelation 
I would that you were hot or cold. Choose. But he said, doggone it, please don't be lukewarm. <laughs> and what did he say? I spew you out of my mouth. He's in context referring to this contrast. Live by the law, live by the New Testament, but if you mix them and thinking that you figured out a way to do both of them, I throw up. Why? Because now the results is zero. Mm. NLT. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. I love that. You are born again under the New Testament. You don't have a spirit that makes you a fearful, a fearful slave. Instead, you receive God's spirit. Somebody say, I've received God's spirit. I've received God's spirit. Not the spirit of a fearful slave. Not the spirit of a fearful slave. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. I tell you what, that's powerful. That's radical. It's a radical change. It's, it is for freedom from bondage. It is, the, it is for freedom of the bondage of fear that Jesus shed his blood. It is for the freedom to be, for, to be delivered from the bondage of fear and, uh, where Jesus shed his blood. Now go to Colossians chapter 2, 14. I'm going to look at the NLT and the Amplified. Now, so here's the thing that's going on. We have created a modern-day law. He's delivered us from the law of Moses, but now we have the law of the church. <laughs> the law that came from Moses and not the law that came from church. And the law, that, the law that came from the church is mixed up with the law that came from Moses, but they all have the bottom line, the same bottom line, and the same bottom line is based in fear. If you don't do these things, then God won't do that thing. So here's what ultimately fear is. Fear is, is not having confidence that what God promised in his word, you're afraid that he won't do. You are afraid that what God promised in this New Testament won't come to pass. You are afraid that when he says you're righteous, you're afraid that if you sin, you're going to undo your righteousness. That's the modern day law. Afraid that you can undo. You know, that takes a lot of gall. Did it book? It is. It is. It's arrogant. It, for you to, this is, this is radical. For you to think that your behavior is greater than what the blood of Jesus did. Wow. For real? For real? You don't understand that when Jesus made you righteous, you really think that your unrighteous behavior is strong enough to undo what he sealed in his blood? God, dog. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I'll teach it. I think I've taught it already, but there's a chapter where Abraham and his wife, I think it was uh, Ambimelech, he took his wife and Abraham lied. And somebody said he did a half lie because she was a half sister, but it was a lie. And Abraham just didn't stand up and be the man he should have been. And God still treated him like he was righteous. You keep reading the rest of the chapter, the boy walked away loaded with favor. I got upset. I asked the Lord, I said, that ain't right. How, how he going to do this and, and walk away like that? And I started quoting the law. And the law said, first of all, the law wasn't here. Abraham was still, grace was still made available to him before the law even showed up. He says, but number two, when I decide to declare a man righteous, I'm going to treat him righteous even when he ain't acting right. <laughs> well, Lord, why in the world would you want to do that? Because my goodness will cause a man to repent yes. from his unrighteous ways. Righteous. Your behavior can't undo that. Who do you think you are? That's no different than you thinking that the blood of animals is greater than the blood of Jesus. 
you, you, we got this, 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 the religion, the modern day performance-based, law-based religion is doing that to your head. You do not understand what Jesus has done. He, what he has done is permanent and available for anybody that believes. Permanent and available to anybody that believes and receives him as father. Don't you see that's what he was trying to, 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 to get to the, over to the rich young ruler? Why calleth thou me master? Mm. There's none good except one, and that's God. Won't you call me God so I can show you good? But you, you don't believe I'm God. So I can't show you what I can do, so let me tell you what you are asking me for. Lord, show me what I need to do to have eternal life. All right, keep the commandments. I know you can't keep them anyway, but keep the commandments. He told him, he answered his question, what do I do? I'm going to tell you to do something I know you can't do without me. Right, right. And you keep asking God what you need to do, like you're going to do it based on your performance and make something happen without him. And you would think once you go do it, at least you'll come back and say, Lord, that didn't work. And then what we do, we come back, I don't understand. I did this. I did that. I did that. I understand. Get your doing out the way and get your believing in what he's already done and walk around and rest in peace. Here's what Jesus did, Colossians chapter 1, 2, verse 14. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. Look at this in the Amplified. He canceled. He's referring to the law. He took the law away, and he canceled it. Colossians 2, 14, Amplified. Having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note the bond with its legal decrees and demands, that's what the law was about, demands, 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 which was in force and stood against us. It was hostile to us. The law was hostile to us. The law was hostile. To, the law wasn't given to give you advantage over sin. The law was given to give sin advantage over you. It was hostile to us. This note, referring to the law, with its regulations and decrees and its demands, he set aside, cleared completely out of our way. How? By nailing it to the cross, shedding his blood, and introducing to you the new and living way. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Somebody real quick, lift your hands up and say, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Lord have mercy. So you're familiar now, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. When fear comes in, ultimately fear comes in today as a result of you not believing that what he promised is going to happen. Take every fear that you deal with, go all the way down to the very root of it. I don't believe that what God promised is going to happen. I am afraid that what I read won't happen. And you know where that leaves you? It moves you to self-preservation. Well, now you fall from grace back into self-effort and performance-based religion. Really. You know where it moves you? It moves you back to the letter killeth. We gotta talk about this, man. God's not giving us the spirit of fear. That's not what came with this New Testament. That's not what came when his blood was shed. That's a part of the law. The law gives the spirit of fear. You afraid that you're not doing enough. Five days enough is not enough fasting. I gotta do two, two more weeks. Uh, it's just never enough. And the fear comes in and then the bondage come in, then it brings about all the emotions and all of the stress, and you're being tormented. 
The Bible says fear brings torment. Well, it came from the devil. True, but it came from the devil through the performance-based, law-based, letter-killeth-based system that, by the way, was sealed by the blood of animals. <laughs> and, we, and we sit up here arguing about, I don't know about this great stuff. You were saved by this great stuff. How you feel you don't know about this great stuff? <laughs> All right. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 5, and then we'll, and we'll get one more, and then we'll head towards that, uh, take the last several minutes and look at the bloodless Jesus. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 5, notice what he says, and the Lord, what does he direct? He directs your heart into the love of God, not fear. He directs your heart into the love of God, not fear, and into the patient waiting for Christ, a waiting for Christ. That's where you're choosing him before uh, any human aid, trust. So that's what he directs your heart into do. He directs your heart into love of God. And here's what he means. Let me make sure I make this plain. He directs your heart into the place where you believe. Here's what the deal is. The love of God, not how much you love him, but how much you believe the love that he has for you. I believe God loves me. Say that. I believe God loves me. Whatever's going on in your life, say it again. I believe God loves me. Uh, whatever's happening, say, I believe God loves you. I believe God loves Whatever somebody forecasts evil over your life, say it again, I believe God loves me. That is the foundation for every deliverance you'll ever need in your life. I believe God loves me. And while it might not look so powerful and while it might not sound with all of the thump, it is the most powerful attitude that a Christian can rest in. I believe God loves me. And when everything wants to scream out, I don't deserve it, I ain't worthy, you very calmly say, I believe God loves me, loves me, and you rest in that. And you might not know all the intricate details of how you're going to do it, and the only thing you have to say to people, I, I believe God loves me. Yeah, but you lost your job. I, I, I believe he loves me. I believe he loves me enough that something else is going to open up. Yeah, but they said you had cancer. I believe he loves me enough that I'm going to be healed from somehow, some way. Yeah, but your husband or your wife just left you and you're miserable. I still believe he loves me, and my mind's going to be all right. He loves me. He loves me. Boy, that's my go-to. I don't try to quote the whole Bible. I got to get myself rested in the love of God. That no matter what happens, God, you love me. I receive the love you have for me. I believe you love me. And because you love me, I am waiting for you, Lord. I'm waiting for you to be active on my behalf. I'm waiting for you, Lord. I'm waiting for you to move on my behalf. I'm waiting for you, Lord. You love me enough, and I know you love me. Therefore, I will not conceive that I am stuck, stranded, and defeated. I am highly loved by the Father. Ha, hallelujah. I am highly loved. I dare you to say that right now. Say it. Say it. I'm highly loved by the Father. I ain't got no money to pay my bills. I believe God loves me. Rest there. Be still right there. Whoo, Jesus. Lift your hands up. Just raise your Come on, just raise real quick. Just lift your hands up. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you're leading me. You're directing my heart to your love, the love that the Holy Spirit poured in my heart the day I got born again because of your blood in the New Testament. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. Somebody say amen on that. Amen. 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 Uh, one more, 1 John 4, 18. Embrace the love of God that he has for you, not fear. Don't embrace fear. Embrace love. Every time fear is there, embrace love. Every time fear appears, Embrace love. Now, how much you love him, but how much he loves you. And guess what he says? Faith worketh by you believing how much he loves you. Put it in context now. It's just time to put it together now. Faith works by how much you believe God loves you. If you don't believe in the love of God, your faith won't work. But if you're saying there, I know God loves me, and watch your faith, therefore I'm healed. Therefore I'm healed works by I know how much God loves me. 
That's, revel that's revelatory right now. I know God's going to meet my needs. No, back up. I know God loves me. Get that straight. Therefore, all of my needs are met. Many believers have the wrong impression of God because they're not rightly dividing the word between the Old and New Covenant. A true understanding of what Jesus achieved on the cross will open your spiritual eyes to the power you now receive from God's love, which is the foundation for deliverance in every area of your life. Faith in the blood of Jesus is knowing what the blood has accomplished for you. And so we've got to understand, we've got to know, and then we've got to apply what the Bible teaches about the blood of Jesus. And when you do this, then you're going to be free from sin, you're going to be free from fear, you're going to be free from sickness. You're going to be free from deception. You're going to be free from the curses, and you're going to be free from every negative work of the devil. For a love gift of 15 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling, you'll receive the Bloodless Savior 2 message series. Call or visit the website on your screen to get your copy today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Where do you find yourself when you now live by the faith of what Jesus has done? You find yourself in, watch this, rest. When Jesus came, the striving was to end. He says, enter into my ease. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving. It was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to sow at this time. We want to thank you in advance for your support. To support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.